I don't like stuff that sucks. <laughs> Do you prefer Beavis or Butthead? Or neither, as some parents find. Patrick Swayze prefers doing his own stunts. So we had fun yet? Yeah, that's for it! Such a funny thing, but every time you're near me, I never can behave. Sheena Easton is singing a whole new tune, and it's just the right prescription. It's like my little medicine chest of music that makes me feel better. And it's a whole new tootie. She's all grown up. He ate caviar from my cleavage, and we drank champagne from my shoe. <laughs> it's like, what? Entertainment Tonight is right on target for this last weekend of August 1993. Hi, everybody. Welcome to Entertainment Tonight. I'm Bob Dolan. We're thrilled to have with us 1993's Miss America, Leanza Cornett, filling nice. in for Lisa. Nice to be with you, Bob. It's great. You've been filling in for Mary Hart all week? I've had a great week. I really Good. have. Well, now this is the culmination this of the is whole it. experience. This <laughs> Absolutely. is it. <laughs> okay, let's get started. Used to be that cartoons were just for the kids, but not anymore. Two cases in point. Ren and Stimpy, who sing to the preteen set about body parts with Joy Joy, and MTV's Beavis and Butthead. Two irreverent degenerates who managed to shock parents and kids alike. It's clear that today the cartoons are singing a different tune. I'll teach your grandmother to suck eggs. Ren and Stimpy are not only full of disrespect, they're sassy and spunky, and they continually push over the edge with their humor and antics. Ren, you you're angry? It may be too much for some parents and critics, but Nickelodeon's Ann Kramer says the kids tune in for the fun. Kids like zaniness. They like things that are unpredictable. They like things that surprise them. Ren Stimpy gives them a terrific anecdote to kind of, I'll say, cookie-cutter Saturday morning animation. However, among this group of Ren and Stimpy watchers, the kids recognize that the cartoon comedy can be sometimes excessive. It's kind of gross sometimes, like when Stimpy picks his nose and stuff like that. It's kind of gross, but it's kind of funny. It's a little disgusting. <laughs> <laughs> These two guys may be laughing now, but Beavis and Butthead have created a real controversy with their cartoon, which features irreverent observations on school, parents, and the opposite sex. I don't like stuff that sucks. The salty language and occasional violent incidents have drawn criticism from parents and educators. Francis Williams is a school psychologist. The images portrayed on Beavis and Butthead are inappropriate for children. She says it's not just the images, it's the antisocial messages. It's okay to be a low achiever. Uh, parents don't support you. Uh, women are only the objects of, uh, only sexual objects. Educators acknowledge that part of the lure of the cartoon programs for the kids is that their parents disapprove. But Patty Barth, director of an educational council, says there is a larger problem. The problem with these programs is that they seem to be devoid of any moral framework. Television critic Tom Shales is much more harsh in his criticism. It's another s sign that TV is uh, destroying our moral fiber, I guess, but I'm not sure what to do about it. We can't pass a law against Beavis and Butthead. As for the kids, why do they watch? Because it's just a stupid show. A collection of home videos and an album of songs containing the music, the wit, and the wisdom of Ren and Stimpy will hit stores this week. And take heart, all you Beavis and Butthead fans. They have an album in the works and plans for a movie. 